liminal spaces. This is a conceptual phenomenon that resonated with a lot of people, and I didn't consider myself one of those people until I played this game. I love walking simulators. One of my favorite games of all time is a walking simulator, yet it is a genre that is really easy for people to find boring. If you can keep the intrigue and make the player want to explore deeper with a captivating narrative, then you've got a good walking simulator. After playing it for a bit on stream, I kept thinking about it. The game kept calling to me as if something was lurking, luring me back into the depths of psychological despair, even though every part of me said I was done with this game. It's gotten to the point where I'll be thinking about this game when I should be working, when I have a few dollars of fun money available to me, when I see a body of water, Death Note, Severance, Black Mirror, Breaking Bad, Bojack Horseman. All these shows tackle the psychological nature of the individual. I've always loved the cat and mouse chase of these specific genres, and it's what led me to really enjoy all these shows, even when it gets dark. Darkness itself isn't what terrifies me, it's the possibility of what lurks in the darkness. The lack of information and sudden change of atmosphere, as well as being in the middle of it, sounds terrifying to me, and I will avoid it at all costs, even though I'm the one to turn off all the lights at night. These five elements interest me in different ways, which all intersect at pools. On my new collaborative daily gaming channel with my friend Red, he watched while I played this game. I wasn't expecting much, calling it a quote unquote game and being extremely unsure what to expect. I stumbled across writings on the wall, deep dark waters, a ladder, a giant pit, a camera rewinding. On the surface, all of these situations look kinda boring. But there's one aspect you haven't considered, and it's being replaced by my voice. The atmosphere. There was no music, but only sounds. In chapter one, the camera is hinted at at the very beginning, and two of my fears appear at once. I finally went through the water, and I was fine. When you get wet, the floor sticks to your feet, and you make more noise when you walk. And overall, the atmosphere is a bit unsettling, with markings scribbled on the walls, even sometimes looking like a map. There's a sprint, but part of me feels like it was unnecessary to use because all it did was make more noise. I did use it in water though, sometimes. The low rumbling in the water is what you mostly hear throughout this game, which wouldn't have happened if we didn't fall through this hole at the beginning of the game. One could argue this game is open world, and it feels so quiet you can hear yourself breathe after sprinting. and. Half the time, I feel like I could hear something in the water, but apparently your character is so petrified that you can't jump or go underwater. As I was thinking all of this, I stumbled across the pit from earlier, except the pit is dark and scarier than before. There's the noise again, a whale sound. I remember seeing a ladder in the original time I tried to play this, and I almost made it to the ladder. And also, this game tells you absolutely nothing. As I saw a clock for about the fifth time, I realized I was battling through my two fears as I made it through to a staircase. The game says no jump scares, but that almost makes it worse by heightening your sense of dread, anxiety, and paranoia. When you find a ladder that doesn't move, you can actually climb it, and I swear I, I just heard something splash. This is the point where I started getting tensed up again after I was finally relaxed as I could be and paused the game for a minute after seeing a giant red duck which, by the way, is actually a phobia. At this point, I started panicking because I couldn't find a way out, and I'm back to where I was before. I swear, that, that dog moved. No, it did. I, I saw it. I, I swear. I've never been happier to see an exit sign. This leads me to a room full of holes. What, what is this bridge? Okay. With chapter one complete, I only played for 30 minutes, but man, it felt like hours. In chapter two, I realized that these are actually videos, or at least that is how the levels are presented, which makes sense why there is a camcorder. There's more pools, and part of me wishes it was not pools because this water is honestly unsettling. At this point, I started thinking a bunch of different things, like, why am I playing this? Well, this slide isn't safe. Who made this place? This is an extremely dark and unsettling room with why, and why are there low chiming sounds and, and clanging? What is this place? This statue is how I feel right now. Why is there an empty pool? And then a sound wave hits me and I'm kind of stun locked because I don't know what just happened. Chairs are underwater as music starts playing. What is going on? And then it transitions back to no music. And there's another statue. Is this a cult? Okay, these bridges are getting weird, and then after that I found another slide to go down. The water droplets on the camera 
further signify that yes this is a video that you are watching that somebody else filmed which i do like this attention to detail because it makes it more believable that there's the, just this person with this camera going through this backrooms-esque area and it's just crazy how ominous a single object is especially when it is so vibrantly colored when everything else is not after that we slide down to finish chapter two in chapter three after two levels i was just done for the night at this point i i was so tired of feeling this dread and each level so far has taken about 30 minutes so you can turn off the interactable water but that takes away most of the game's eeriness and personally i think this game is best enjoyed alone at night so I'm not sure what the interactive water setting actually does, to be honest. This game makes you hyper fixate to every little sound, especially when juxtaposed to a steam room that you just find out of nowhere. Things just feel out of place. Like, why, why do I feel the urge to not sprint in water anymore? The duck slightly splashes. The architecture doesn't feel human. The walls turn to what appears to be a to black, the darkest shade of all. I audibly said, what the when a row of statues huddled at my exit and i froze listen i'm not claustrophobic but this game also has that factor occasionally as well as paranoia and my paranoia is so bad that i'm constantly wondering why swimming is so loud and then sprinting as soon as i see a staircase also gravity plays with different rules in this place and after two areas of expecting a pool this place shatters its humanity both the ability to walk on walls and the multiple safety hazards making this place feel more unsettling i don't belong here and the statues are just way more present now the water looks more like you're swimming in complete darkness at this point and i stumble across the darkest maze i've ever seen we walk into the darkness and break through the floor in chapter 4, we fell into water, and the term pools seems like a distant memory. I can't even begin to describe this new area I've stumbled upon, and there's a second sound wave. Reality starts tearing apart as we teleport, the light emanating looks like a person, and there's another wave. I, 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 I see something alien. What could that glowing purple thing be? Will, will I finally get answers? Guess not. I keep having this morbid state of curiosity that keeps dragging me into the darkness, and the bright colors again seem out of place and ominous. There's a huge pit, so many stairs, a giant mask, another giant face, a pattern I was starting to notice was follow the darkness, so I did that, and I ended up walking aimlessly, but the blurs help guide you, so that's like the third wave that I stumbled upon, leading me to the creepiest lazy river I've ever taken a part in, only to end up seeing more statues. Chapter 5. Wait, this is the first area, but it's blocked by bricks. I don't feel as scared by the water or the darkness, and wait now everything's bricks it sounds like a bell is going off at this point and i i've been here before but from a different perspective the wall stairs are here i saw the statue from an earlier chapter there's a new texture change a loud noise erupts a phone booth isn't actually multiple phone booths are in sight and i'm back to the pools and there's a dark maze an escalator which kind of seems out of the ordinary to be honest and after sliding down a ramp i'm I'm home. No. Someone is messing with me. The ground shakes into complete darkness. In chapter 6, I'm in a house. A hand tells me where to go, and I sit in the chair to give myself a minute to process everything that's happened to me. We then go from house to pool, pool to sauna, and then I see this. There is something that doesn't want me here. There's all these sunken houses, and s something got in here. I don't know what, but something painted this painting. There's a giant chessboard, an art museum out of nowhere, and it's the same horrifying painting on repeat as I travel through this darkness. A train station? There's something beautiful and horrific about this game at the same time, and... I don't know how else to explain it. There's moving platforms that help me get to an exit and no jump scares. Yeah, right. The statues appeared for a few seconds and then there's another maze. So it was the statues the whole time, meaning that my paranoia 
was justified. Now, for a game with no story or narrative, it does a great job at atmosphere. For a liminal space simulator, it respects the source material because the whole point of liminal spaces is that the space itself is off-putting, not because of a monster. Good game. And although I wasn't the biggest fan of the ending, the journey was wild enough of a ride to be memorable and make sense why so many people love this game.